So how much vintage racing chronograph can you get for 350 quid? That's the question so many brands are trying to answer at the moment. I've seen a plethora of these come to market from a variety of micro brands. Some who do it well, some not so well. Well, today we're taking a look at Nazumi, who got in touch with us recently, offering to send us their attractive Lowe's chronograph. I'd never heard of this brand before. I assumed from the email that they were Chinese or Japanese or something, as that's just what the brand name sounds like. It turns out the brand is actually from Sweden, which took me off guard. Their whole marketing and aesthetic really appeals to me as someone who loves motor racing, especially back in the day when it was all a bit more maverick. You have a bunch of vintage inspired designs on their site. The one I'm reviewing is the Panda Style Lowe's Chronograph, named after the famous, now renamed Lowe's Hotel and Casino in Monte Carlo, which sits right beside the street circuit hairpin. The watch arrived in this cool green retro box. It looks great and sets the tone for what to expect within. Opening it up, you get a glimpse of the watch with a leaflet informing you of the included two year warranty. The felt lining on the lid is a nice touch to ensure that the watch doesn't get damaged in transit. Pleasingly, this watch sits at just 40 millimeters in diameter, making it more wearable than loads of the competition whose offerings often start at 42 millimeters and over. It is chunky at 13.8 millimeters, which we'll talk about in a moment, though the 47 millimeter lug to lug makes this a particularly versatile choice. The watch even looks good on my small six and a quarter inch wrist and I bet it could even suit larger wrists. During usage, the watch feels comfortable enough and doesn't rock about too much either. From above, I think this watch is a real looker. It gives a very familiar aesthetic with the dark sub dials against the pale backdrop. There are plenty of watches floating about that look similar to this. However, Nozomi has added a couple of extra touches to try and make theirs stand out from the crowd. The case is constructed of the ever popular 316L stainless steel and features a lovely curvature to the lugs that I think suit this watch perfectly. I'm unsure exactly what makes these look so good, but it's one of the first things I noticed. The sub dials are deeply inset into the dial as well, which gives this some much needed depth. This colorway instantly took my eye when I was browsing their website. The navy and light cream combined for a truly classic look. I particularly like the dark tachymeter on this model. It looks fantastic there on the circumference. The watch also features applied owl markers, which is to be expected, but it still looks nice. Outside of the fairly standard syringe handset, you will notice a rather unusual second hand, which is adorned with a skeletonized Nozomi logo. This brand's logo is quite unusual, but I certainly don't mind it. You get some super luminova on each hand, which does a fairly good job of indicating the time in dark environments, though there's no coverage on the rest of the dial, except for some tiny pips around the perimeter that is, which are far from strong, which I suppose isn't to be expected on a chronograph like this. I like the implementation of the main logo at the top center. The printing is done to a noticeably high standard. If it were up to me, I'd like to see the Lowe's text slightly lower down to make the face look more evenly balanced. As currently, the logo on the second hand seems to rest awkwardly above it when it's static. If you could just shove that Lowe's logo down a bit, I think it would sit a lot nicer. Also, I think it would look better if they just dropped the word Sweden from the dial. Nazumi Stockholm just flows and sounds better to me than Nazumi Stockholm Sweden. And I think it would sit neater in place on the watch too. It might have to be made a fraction smaller, but if it were positioned below that Nozumi, I think it'd look good. I think anyone that cares that the brand is from Sweden anyway will already know that Stockholm is the capital of Sweden. So personally, I feel like it, it just doesn't need to be there. Nevertheless, I'm far from a designer, so what do I know? The rear of the case is also really impressive. There's nothing crazy going on here, but it's heavily embossed with the logo and slogan. The lower portion featuring a molded dotted texture, which contrasts nicely with the glossy outer. You can expect to get 50 meters of water resistance thanks to its screw down nature. I think that's fine for this type of watch. So while I think the watch looks great from a bird's eye view, I have to say I'm not so keen on the side profile. It features a central brush section that runs the length of the case, flanked by two shiny sections. I'm unsure whether it's the thickness of the lug area and the way they curve over at the tip or the steps to design overall as you work your way down the case, but I'm left feeling that it looks a bit blocky. With this current design, I think the watch could do with being thinner overall to complement those compact width measurements. Given the shapely look of the lugs from above, I think this watch could look more attractive if those sides were a bit more curved to suit. 
Laterally, you can also see the double-domed sapphire crystal present over the dial. Surprisingly, this one provides very little distortion, which may please you if you're after pure legibility, but could be somewhat unexpected if you're after some creamy blurring. I was outside when writing the script for this video, and during it, I was struck by just how good that internal anti-reflective coating is, even in direct sunlight. It's some of the best I've reviewed so far, and it made filming the B-roll much easier than others I've tried. This crystal is raised out of the case by a few millimeters of the circumference, which can look cool, but may expose it to damage. Nevertheless, the sapphire will still give you fantastic scratch resistance. The pushes and crown work pretty much as expected, with a satisfying clunk to operate the stopwatch functionality and reasonable grip on the crown. It's not as grippy as first impressions would have you believe though, and it's a tad tricky to pull out from the case, as the notched area on the rear is so slim that it's borderline pointless. I've slipped and missed plenty of times when trying to adjust the, the crown for filming B-roll and taking photos. Nevertheless, in regular usage, you won't be touching this much thanks to the Mecha Quartz movement inside. This is the Seiko VK63 and it will provide you with long-term, accurate performance anyway. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that this is a fairly popular choice in microband watches, especially low-end chronographs. You'll notice the timer functionality gives a smoother tick than regular quartz watches when activated. It's not quite at the level of a mechanical watch, but it's somewhere in between. The lower pusher snaps the hand back to the 12 o'clock position instantly too, which is awesome. Unfortunately, if you look closely, that second hand isn't perfectly aligned and sits a fraction over to the left. While only a minor thing, it suggests the movement isn't aligned precisely, which is a shame. Whoa, 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 hold up there, Ben. Yeah, at first I thought it was the hand or movement, now I'm not so sure. Upon closer inspection when recording the B-roll for this video, I noticed it's actually the applied 12 o'clock marker that's offset instead. You can just see it sitting off to the side by like half a millimeter. The light reflecting off it creates some sort of optical illusion. Nevertheless, to the naked eye from any sort of normal distance, it's not noticeable at all. You'd only see it if you're really looking for it. I've seen a lot worse elsewhere. I like these movements, and given it's tricky for microbands to offer competitively priced mechanical chronographs, I think they make for a suitable substitute. Included with this package is a brown rally style strap, which suits the overall look very well. It features a sign buckle, and quality wise, it's wearable, albeit nothing spectacular. It's made of vegetable tan leather and feels okay, but doesn't feature the useful quick release tabs that I've become accustomed to. And if you look closely, it's also got some glue residue around the white stitching, which is a teeny bit sloppy. Regardless, I'd imagine that this would last quite well and it'd be definitely usable, but only time will tell. It features a large number of holes that should suit various wrist sizes. My six and a quarter inch wrist occupies the penultimate slot for reference. Penultimate on the smaller end, at least. When you put all the pieces together, I think this makes for a watch that looks the part when it comes to work or play. Switching the straps could give this a dramatically different aesthetic and the dial manages to pull it off well. For approximately 350 pounds, I think it's far from a bad choice, though a couple of chinks in the armor would have to be ironed out for me to part with that out of my own pocket. If the marketing material that they provide me with is to be believed, bar the movement, these seem to be made in Sweden, in-house. Take a listen to this and tell me what you think. The only thing that I actually outsource as a part is the movement. Otherwise, I draw everything and we do the 3D sketches and 3D printing the case. Everything that I do is it's made from the ground up. It's a long process to make it, just one watch. If this is indeed the case, I think they should mention it on their website. As I didn't see it anywhere, I was just under the impression that these were Chinese made. So that's pretty cool, but despite this, I think somewhere in the two to three hundred pound range would be more appropriate in my mind. I have to think back to some of the surprisingly good Mecha Quartz Chinese brand watches that are available for much less. If you want to watch the looks great, this might be for you. I'll leave a link in the video description to the Nazumi website.